And Senator Baum and Men Menendez of New Jersey. Um, Senator, we just saw you on the floor of the Senate um, it, using your time um, to talk about don't ask, don't tell them the repeal. Give me a sense of what it's like to be there working through an issue that is so near and dear to so many service members' hearts. Well, it's going to be a historic vote. It's going to be another movement forward in our country's uh, civil rights. Uh, you know, when you wear the uniform of the United States and you go into harm's way and you're in battle, uh, does your courage get diminished because you happen to be gay? When you're shot and you're bleeding, does that mean less because you're gay? Uh, when you give the ultimate sacrifice to your country and come back in a flag draped coffin, does it mean less because you were gay? Absolutely not. And so uh, everything we know from the Secretary of Defense, from the Defense Department's own report, uh, from the cha Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, from a whole host of uh, military experts, both Republican, who served under both Republican and Democratic administrations, say that this is not in our national interest, not in our national security, won't undermine cohesiveness. And we've given the president the wherewithal to have the time for him to make the decision with the Secretary of Defense to get it right. So uh, I'm uh, really proud of the United States Senate today when at 3 o'clock it cast that historic vote to end this discrimination in our nation's military. Well, uh, the House had already passed the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell as part of the defense authorization bill. Um, the strategy was that if you could link it to funding the troops, that you would get more support for it. And yet that wasn't the case. Why do you think it was that this needed to be a standalone issue in order to get it passed through the Senate? Well, I think that at the end of the day, there was an excuse by some saying that, oh, you're attaching this to the military authorization for the Defense Department, and you're jamming it that way. That excuse is eliminated. This is an up or down vote. Those who want to perpetuate the discrimination of servicemen and women who are giving their all in service to the country, uh, risking their lives, uh, they will have a chance to vote and continue that discrimination. Those of us who want to end that discrimination, who value the servicemen, men and women who are honorably serving in the nation's armed forces and securing this nation and risking their lives, we're going to have an opportunity to end that discrimination. And so it's a clear vote, and I think there are no more excuses. If the uh, final vote follows the cloture vote, the procedural vote we saw earlier today, there will be 63 lawmakers who stand up and support this, including uh, six Republicans. Those are the ones who voted yes in the procedural vote. The DREAM Act, not so, and, there, and there's the pictures now of those uh, six Republicans. You had Lisa Murkowski, Scott Brown, Olympia Snow of Maine, Susan Collins of Maine, uh, George Voinovich of Ohio, and Mark Kirk of Illinois, who have crossed the aisle to join Democrats um, in supporting the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And again, we're watching for that final vote in now about 20 minutes. The DREAM Act, though, uh, failed. You needed 60 votes, came up with 55. What's your reaction to that? Well, I'm deeply disappointed, and uh, I remind uh, all of those young dreamers that the only reason that we are realizing their dream and sending that bill to the president uh, is because Republicans insisted on a supermajority vote instead of a simple majority vote. Obviously, with the 55 votes, a majority of the United States Senate wants to take advantage of the opportunity these young people present to our country, even in mil either, either through military service in our country, honorable service for two years and or their intellect and we've heard and I've spoken about so many of these young people valedictorians salutarians ROTC uh, leaders uh, who can't fulfill their dream of helping America these are young people bought here through no choice of their own you know they've grown up in our grammar schools and our high schools they pledge allegiance to the flag every day they sang the Star Spangled Banner as the only national anthem they know they are American in every respect uh, and instead of taking the investments we've already made in them and having them fulfill their dreams and give back to America, including uh, honorable service in the armed forces, we denied them that dream today. Uh, we will keep the fight on. Uh, and I think the Hispanic community and other communities in the country are going to be looking at that vote and knowing who was on their side and who was not. It's a complicated issue, but I got to tell you, when I was interviewing students this summer as part of our coverage uh, in Arizona about that controversial illegal immigration law, 
um, to listen to them say, look, I, I was brought here as a baby. I didn't have a choice about it. And I can't go to college now because the state schools won't let me get state funding to go or the scholarships um, preclude people who are not in this country legally and, and being afraid of being tossed out, even though the only life you've ever known has been as an American you know, it's a difficult, difficult issue. Another difficult issue, and I know that this is one that hits home for the people of your state of New Jersey, is uh, the 9-11 responders bill. Um, the New York delegation has been outraged at the lack of movement on this. Give me some perspective about where it stands, where it's heading. Well, we're hoping to get still a final vote uh, on the 9-11 bill. You know, I, I think it was morally outrageous for Republicans to say that they would not vote uh, on the 9-11 bill until we had a tax vote. Imagine if those who responded on that fateful day and then the days after at the World Trade Center site, like Jim Zadroga, who the bill is named after, a New Jerseyan who was a New York City police officer, spent 450 hours at the World Trade Center site. His only protection against the toxins that were being emitted was a paper mask. Imagine if we told people like Jim Zadroga, who passed away, that in fact we have to wait for a tax vote. Imagine if they told us, well, we're going to wait till you vote a certain way before we respond. Uh, it would be outrageous. So it's, there's no moral equivalency. And I'm proud that all 58 Democrats at that time voted for the bill to move forward. Unfortunately, again, Republicans insisted on a supermajority, and not one Republican joined us to respond to those individuals, police, firefighters, emergency management personnel, who on those faithful days responded to the nation's need. You know, a grateful nation doesn't just go to a commemoration on September 11th. A grateful nation takes care care of the men and women who wore a different uniform as police officers, firefighters, emergency management personnel and others in how we take care of their health care and their disabilities. And that's what I hope we'll still have a chance to do before the session ends. And I'm asking Harry Reid uh, to give us that opportunity. He's certainly going to try to find a way to do so. Senator Menendez, I know you have the business of the nation to attend to. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with, here, with us here on MSNBC. Thanks. Good to be with you. All right.